Today we got some stories for you that are, uh, I mean, honestly, some of the biggest stories we've maybe had in Nintendo history or Nintendo related history. Uh, three big stories in general, four total, one of them about the end of a legendary era for Nintendo. I honestly can't believe that we are going to be talking about this today. Before we get into our stories, because man, is it a wild day. I got to tell you about today's sponsor. First story today is about Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. Now, you might have heard this story a bit earlier this week from some other places, but I haven't talked about it yet because I wanted to wrap my mind around the full understanding of, of what's happening here. So for those wondering, we talked about back in January that Pixel Remasters is coming to Nintendo Switch. We were the only, well, not the only, but one of the first places, I suppose, to put out there that we had sources telling us that Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster was coming to Switch. Now, a lot of people don't trust YouTubers when it comes to their quote-unquote sources, and it's not like I have this sterling track record. In fact, I rarely put my neck out there for anything in regards to stuff I hear. I did for uh, stuff having to do with the Heroes of Hyrule game, because I heard some stuff behind the scenes about that, and then the video came out from Digino Gaming, so that was obviously correct, but that's because my source was the people making that video, so, I mean, that should have been pretty obvious. But when it comes to actually revealing games for Switch, it's pretty rare that I ever hear anything, but I was pretty confident about Pixel Remasters, and I have gotten a lot of flack over, you know, pretty much since then, every month that goes by that the game isn't announced. Well, now something has come out that basically confirms I was right all along, we just don't know when it's coming, and that is because Final Fantasy 1 through 6 have now been rated by the ESRB for Nintendo Switch, also technically for PlayStation 4 as well, and it seems to be the format of Pixel Remaster that was actually, well, rated. So this is big because Pixel Remaster was obviously on PC. People wondered if it would ever come over to Switch or any other platform, and now we have some confirmation on that fact. Now, we don't know when this is going to be announced. If I had to guess, I would say Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster or Remasters or whatever will be announced February, like at the Nintendo Direct. I, I do truly believe Nintendo's going to stick to their Direct schedule. We'll probably get massive Zelda news in that Direct as well and probably a lot more, but I do think Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster will appear in that Direct. When it's going to drop, I don't know. It could be a shadow drop. It could be something that they decide they're going to launch the following month. I don't think they need like a long hype cycle. These are old classic games, although remastered a little bit. But yeah, I do think that this is going to be something the February Direct. One thing we do know is that it exists for Switch and PlayStation 4. This is like undeniable at this point. So cool. I guess uh, a tip of the cap to myself for uh, being on top of something eight months early, nine months, 10 months, 11 months, whatever. I knew about this a while ago, and now we have some confirmation. Next up, I want to talk to you about Switch sales data. Now, normally we go over like the Famitsu numbers and stuff like that, and we do have the Famitsu numbers posted over at the NintendoPrime.net website. We'll put a link to that down in the description. But I actually want to talk about some a bit of older sales numbers. How about the week of Black Friday? Because VG Charts has finally updated their sales data, and I want to talk about why we're going to cover VG Charts. So VG Charts has traditionally not been considered super reliable until later. Like they update their sales numbers over time as more data comes in. But VG Charts has changed how they collect their data really a, a few years ago. And it's gotten to the point now where the reason that we're just getting an update for Black Friday is they truly wait until they have verified information on this. And so now we get really good idea of what the sales are like in Japan, Europe, uh, United States here, North America, and obviously worldwide. And these numbers end up being fairly accurate. So it is worth paying attention to now. Way more than, say, VG Charts was worth paying attention to a decade ago. It was sort of a hodgepodge. They were just making lots of guesses. Now they use real information uh, and have stopped trying to rush the numbers out there before everybody else. They're not interested in being first. They're interested in having accurate information. So I want to go over this because... 
it does give it a really good idea of just how well, or I guess how bad the Switch is selling. I don't think that's going to be the conclusion here, but let's go over this. So, as of the week of November 26th, Nintendo Switch has sold 1.3 million units worldwide. Now, that's just for that week. That's a lot of units in one week. All right, that's 300,000 units higher than anybody else. So, Switch was number one for that week, even though they weren't number one in every territory. Let's go over this. Switch was in third place in the United States, selling roughly 585,000 units. Xbox Series uh, sold best that week at 729,000 units, while PlayStation 5 moved 685,000 units. However, Switch dominated in Europe, selling 393,000 units, compared to 210,000 for Xbox and 168,000 for PlayStation 5, while also dominating in Japan with 156,000 units, with really only the PlayStation 5 doing anything else in Japan at 50,000. Now, worldwide, and this includes sales from territories not from those big three, Switch hit 1,331,000 units in sales compared to the Xbox Series at 1,085,000 uh, sales, and then PS5 at 1,054,000 sales. Now, we do know some stuff from you know outlets over time, like just because Switch may have won that week or was in third place that week, all this stuff. You know, PlayStation 5 won the MPD overall for the month of November with Xbox number two and Switch number three. This is stuff we already know about. This was published by the MPD themselves. Fumitsu numbers are actually backing up the Japan figures because uh, VG Charts makes estimates based on available sales data and then updates that data after they get more official numbers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So look, these numbers are obviously incredible. It also kind of goes against this narrative that the sales of Switch are dipping and that is the reason to bring out new hardware look i do think new hardware would be exciting and i would love to see it and maybe a mid-gen refresh is still in the cards but i do think that you kind of look at the facts here the switch is still selling incredibly well incredibly healthy so sales numbers i, I think we need to start talking about sales as a reason to release a new platform there would need to be some other reason and maybe those other reasons are valid but sales I mean, Switch is still doing incredible. It might have even still sold the most units overall in the month of November. We won't know until we get the last week of data for November, but we can already go and look at the charts on VG charts and see clearly that Nintendo Switch was the best selling platform overall in November, probably continuing here in December. Not really a surprise when Pokemon. Pokemon came out, Pokemon's still selling incredibly well. Next up, Nintendo Surprise is dropping four brand new Genesis games on Nintendo Switch Online last night. Again, Nintendo does these surprise drops all the time, but I'm really excited about these ones because we got Golden Axe 2, that one's a classic, uh, Alien Storm Columns, and Virtua Fighter 2. These are excellent additions to the Nintendo Switch Online service. We haven't actually had new Genesis games in several months, so I'm really happy to see them continue to get more Genesis games in. It also... Every time we talk about Genesis games getting added, it makes me wonder if there's other third-party platforms that we could see on Switch. Are we going to see like Atari or something else? Can Nintendo work out some deals with other companies? I don't know. It is nice to know that Sega and Nintendo are obviously buddy-buddy. I would like to see like, you know, more Sega systems get added. Like, I, I don't know, like, why not the Sega Saturn or I, Dreamcast? I, look, there's a lot of possibilities there. Like Game Gear. <laughs> God, I can't forget Game Gear, but yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen there, but I'm just glad to see these games get added. And our final story kind of took a shot to my heartstrings uh, because Nintendo does have a little bit of control here because they do make some money off of this because they own the IP rights. And we're talking about the Pokemon Animated Series, which we never talk about, right? The Pokemon Animated Series isn't something that's wholly relevant uh, to most of what we do. We talk about the video games, right? We, we only bring up the outside stuff, the fringe stuff, even the Mario movie stuff, in passing. Well, that's because something really tugged at my heart today. Ash Ketchum will no longer be the lead protagonist of Pokemon anymore as of season 26. He is being retired as far as we're aware. I don't know that if that means he'll never make cameo appearances in the future. That I don't know about, but uh, Ash's adventure ends after 25 seasons at some point next year when season 26 begins now they still have a few i think they said 11 more episodes or so left of whatever season they're on now season 25 uh to wrap up ashes and pikachu's journey and while i'm really glad that the character has gone out as the best like no one ever was uh it's a nice reminder that for our lives one of the things that we're hoping to achieve for each of us individually is to be the best that we can be like no one ever was before us 
And <laughs> we all can only hope to retire the way Ash Ketchum did at the top of our game, at the top of our life, at the peak of our awesomeness. Um, I don't feel like I've hit the peak yet. So I'm going to keep grinding around here. But, uh, man, I'm going to miss him. Anyways, guys, we have 24 seasons of 25 seasons or whatever of of, of Ash Ketchum to enjoy. So I can always go back and rewatch everything. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to miss him. I know he was never technically officially part of the game series, but um, I'm always I'm, – I'm, dude – it's a little bit of an emotional ride over here, all right? That being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jans from Nintendo Prime, and you guys know that I'm going to catch you in that next video.